Welcome back to another Zoom how-to. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to sign up for a Zoom account, explain some of the differences between the free account and the paid account. I'm also going to show you how to set up or how to schedule a meeting, how to make it recurring when you might want to, and how to start your meeting. I'll just also just remind you of some of the settings, particularly the ones that won't have come up in the previous video when I was just talking to you as a participant. And also how to end your video. It's really quite straightforward, you just need to give it a go. But I shall show you all of that momentarily. Are you ready? Let's get on with the video. The biggest difference you're going to have between attending a Zoom meeting and being the host of a Zoom meeting is you need to have a Zoom account. So the first thing you need to do is go to zoom.us, sign up for a free account. Now I'm actually recording this video using Zoom. I've had a few technical issues this afternoon. This is now my fourth attempt. Um, for reasons I won't go into right now. So if I log out of my account to show you what it looks like when you're not logged in, this is gonna, it's gonna mess up the entire thing. But what you will see if you're not, if you don't already have an account and you're not logged in, where it says learn more, you'll see there's a little box where you can add your email address. It's very straightforward. You'll um, imagine you're quite familiar with how to sign up for stuff. So you just wanna sign up for it. You probably have to confirm your email and you'll choose yourself a password, et cetera, et cetera. A couple of pieces I wanted to show you in terms of the plans and the pricing, because you might be wondering. Let's just hide this. Incidentally, at the top of every page, you're gonna see they, are, they have been developing, this is not related to this video, but just worth mentioning for you. They have been developing some resources to help you use Zoom. Um, there's demos, tutorials, effective working practices, lots of things. So if in fact, there's an awful lot of uh, resources there for you. So it might, you might find, you know, if you're finding Zoom useful, you might find it worth your while having a look at some of these, these resources. However, for the purposes of these videos, I am teaching you enough to, to get going and get started. And I personally believe that the best way to use any of these softwares is just to get your hands dirty. Not literally, that's the difference with online. It's, it's metaphorically dirty, but actually just get down there and use the tools. So I just want to walk you through the options. The biggest, biggest difference really is just how, how long meetings can be for groups. You can have 100 participants, both on the free account and the pro account. One-on-one um, -on -one meetings can be as long as you want, free and pro. But there is a 40-minute time limit on the, on the free account for meetings of three or more people. So if you find that you're consistently struggling to keep to that, you might then need to consider a longer meeting. However, Meetings, ideally, I'm a big advocate of shorter meetings. So it might be that you can use this time limit to actually get people moving faster, have an agenda beforehand, use it to your advantage. Let's start you know, working smarter. But I thought it was important to mention to you that is the big difference. Another couple of differences is with the pro account, you get the option to record the meeting um, in the cloud. Uh, and you also have the option to publish your meeting directly to Facebook and YouTube. So you can be in a meeting and people can be watching it online. For most organizations, that's really not relevant. I'm just mentioning it because that's another one of the big differences. But I just stick with free, play with it, see how you get on. And if you find then there are functions that you're missing, then you might want to consider upgrading. Um, but it's worth noting as well, if you do upgrade, it's, a, it's per month per host, but you only need to have one host you can anybody can talk on these calls it doesn't have to be the host only that talks so it's not a massive amount of money every month if you find you do need those resources anyway you've signed up for your account and um you're gonna you're gonna sign in if you're not signed in you'll see a little box here asking you to sign in but once you are signed in click on my account on the right hand side here i'm going to show you how to schedule a meeting which is the real reason why you're here so on the left hand side, you click meetings, you click schedule a new meeting and you can see here one, two, three. Those are my th three tests. I was very optimistic the last time <laughs> it was the final test and it turns out it was not the final test. Do you know why? You don't know why I'm about to tell you why, because I forgot to press record. Uh, now there is a setting where you can automatically record meetings. I never usually have that set. I'm starting to realize that maybe that's a mistake. <laughs> but anyway, that's an aside. But what you can see here, I'm just going to mention this. I've set up a recurring meeting for church and the meeting ID and therefore the URL that we give people will be the same every single time. These are recurring meetings that don't have dates and times associated with them. They've got unique IDs. Now I'm gonna explain the difference right now. So the first thing you wanna do, click on schedule a new meeting. Give it a moment to load. 
let's call it something. I can't type and talk very well, what I'm discovering. Give it a, give it a, a, a topic that is relevant to your organization. I never bother with description, but you can if you want to. Let's pretend that your meeting's gonna be on Monday. So click on the calendar, choose Monday, choose, I don't know, 9 a.m. Why not? Because that's the time I chose every other time I recorded this video. Our meeting is gonna be half an hour long. Stick with your local time zone. If people are joining you from other parts of the world, just tell them it's 9 a.m. UK time. They can use a calculator and work it out. An online convertery thingy. If they get stuck, they can ask for help. Now this is the bit I wanted to show you, recurring meetings. So if you're having a meeting every day at the same time and you wanna repeat it every single day or every two days or every four days, you can only have a maximum of 20 occurrences of that meeting or 90 days into the future. So the disadvantage, I've just explained to you that what recurring meetings have the same URL, which is great for your organization. You give it out one time and people start to know what it is. You can even create a bit.ly link, go to bit.ly and sign up for a free account. You could have a bit.ly forward slash name of your organization and then redirect that to this link, for example. There are ways, because let's be honest, these Zoom links are not pretty, but you can make them pretty using bit.ly if you want to. However, after your 20 occurrences, your repeating your, your recurring meeting options come to an end you then got to set up a new meeting that comes with a different url that's not great so instead if you choose no fixed time it means that you can start the meeting using the url that you've given people and then at the end of the meeting when you end it in your dashboard it will automatic automatically generate that same meeting again as you've already seen in my dashboard three times <laughs> so that I would personally I'm I, I literally didn't find out about this today I learned something new I'm gonna be using that function a lot moving forward it's really handy I would encourage you to always generate automatically a meeting ID you don't want to be using your personal meeting ID this is yours anybody can go and enter that that meeting ID and automatically be connected to my zoom room I am using that zoom room right now to record this video so somebody could gate crash this recording they probably won't because not many people have got it but that's the disadvantage of giving out that personal meeting ID. It's much better to generate a new one automatically. If your organization is very security conscious, perhaps you're dealing with you know, personal information, you might wanna have a password for your meeting. Face-to-face -face connection is what we're aiming for, so I always encourage people to have their videos on. This is where you can make that the default, but people can turn it off themselves if they want to. Unless there's a reason, unless I know that there are people joining my meeting who definitely need to use the phone in the US, I always choose computer audio only, particularly at the moment. Zoom's resources are stretched for reasons that are probably quite obvious. And the more people that can use the computer audio option, the better. It also makes it less confusing for people when they join. So if you're in the UK or basically anywhere that's not the US, I would encourage you to, to stick with that one option. A few more little bits to show you before I bring this to an end, because we're almost done. I always enable join before host. This means if you're running 30 seconds late because you need to go to the bathroom, you can do so without people worrying. Um, they can also chit chat and, you know, catch up while they wait for you to arrive. You can choose if you want to, to mute entrance, mute participants upon entry. They can unmute themselves uh, if you give them that option. And I will show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, but if you know that you're having a big meeting and therefore you want by default every, everybody to be muted, so for example, you, there might be chit chat going on and you don't want everyone suddenly to be like, ah, that's what that option is for. If you don't want people to join before you, you could enable a waiting room. What that means is uh, they get a, a little pop-up box that says your meeting will start soon or words to that effect. I think authenticated users means people who have registered for an account. I quite candidly have never used that option. It's inconvenient. We don't want people to have to register to use, um, to, to use the software. We want to make it as frictionless as possible. You can choose to record the meeting automatically. I'd never do that. I am regretting that right now. There was one other option that I saw last time I set this up and it was about requiring people to register. Let's have a look. Is it this one? Oh, it's about signing into Zoom. No, we don't want that. Perhaps I imagined it then. I guess I am imagining it. Okay, I thought I saw um, 
an option to make people register with their email addresses, but clearly I'm making that up. So just ignore the last 30 seconds of what I just said. That's all you need to know about that. Alternative hosts, you need to pay for extra hosts if you're gonna add that feature. But if you do have extra hosts, pop them in there and you click on save. Give it a moment to load. Okay, now this page is where you see the URL you wanna give people. This is the one, the meeting ID makes up the end of the URL. Uh, and the rest of it is just options to add it to your calendar and such like. Um, oh, this option I hear about live stream, you'll only see that if you've got a paid account. Um, yep, so that's what you need to do in order to set it up. That is now ready to go. You share that URL with the people you want to share it with. And then when it's time for your meeting to start, you want to go back here and you click on the start button for your meeting. You'll get a pop up that looks something like this. You will have seen this before. Now I'm not going to click on this button because it will make the system go bananas because I'm already in a Zoom meeting to record this meeting, uh, to record this video. But this, if you've already watched the video on how to join Zoom as a participant, you will have already seen this before. This will be very familiar to you. So you click on openzoom.us, it will load the software, you click on join with computer audio and you're away. There are a couple of settings, however, that I want to show you within the regular within the, the Zoom platform that you get as host. I'm going to show those to you now. As if you hadn't had enough of crazy hair, it's now Sunday morning. These videos have been getting done on the weekend, done better than perfect because they're meeting a need. People need to see these videos. They cannot wait until Monday morning because people are wanting to use Zoom. Hence, you get crazy hair. <laughs> so anyway, this quick part of the video, I'm just going to show you the, the settings that you're going to get as host. So you'll see that if I take my mouse away from the screen, away from the picture, those controls disappear. So this will happen when you use it too. So if you bring your mouse back onto the screen and magically the controls appear on the screen for a moment. So you want to have a little look down here. My um, audio is shown as being unmuted because otherwise we're going to get feedback on this video and recording for you. Um, but you obviously don't want to be muted when you're trying to talk to people because otherwise they won't better hear you. So if you've already seen the video on how to join Zoom as an attendee, most of these settings you are familiar with. There's a couple of extra ones I just want to show you. So one that's useful is manage participants. So at the moment, there's only little old me, again, spending all my time in my Zoom room on my own. There's just me in here, so I can't do much with myself. But you've got the controls to mute all, unmute all. If I click on more, you can also do things. This is quite useful. If you're hosting, particularly I'm thinking of like an organization where you've started your meeting, you're presenting some stuff, you don't want people arriving late to suddenly be like blah, 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 lots of noise interrupting so you can choose to mute participants on entry so if i click on that you'll get a pop-up that tells you that all new participants will be muted you can give them the option to unmute themselves that can be really helpful because they're not going to just unmute themselves and suddenly start talking but it can be helpful if you want them to contribute they can then do that themselves let's click on cancel other options in there you can have an enter and exit chime don't have that because that's quite noisy and dingy um, it's like it makes a bing bong well you can have that if you want if you want to make sure you know when people are coming in but it's a bit distracting and then you can also lock your meeting what that means is um, once you've got everybody in if you want to make sure that nobody else can arrive you can lock it um, I've never used that but it is an option for you um, and this is helpful allowing all participants to unmute themselves so you can have you have got the function as i've just shown you to unmute people but if you've got a lot of people in there it can be hard to find the settings so allowing them to unmute themselves is really helpful click on the down arrow to close that other settings you've got in there as well if you click on more you can if you've got a pro account you can go live on facebook and youtube you probably don't need that the other piece i want to mention to you is finally is the chat so in the chat I right now can only chat to myself because it's only me here. However, you'll see a list of people will be able to chit chat here if you want them to. I'll get to that in a second. You have got the option if there's more than one person on your call, you can send private messages to people. This can be helpful if, for example, you've got one person that is not unmute, not muted for some reason, or you want to ask them a private question. Is it okay to tell everybody else? X. You have to be good at typing and talking if you're also talking at that moment, which I'm rubbish at, but um, it can be a useful function. However, if you, oh, this is so you can share a file, um, quite self-explanatory. If, however, you don't want people to chat, um, maybe you're getting just used to the platform and actually the idea of having to monitor the chat as well is a bit overwhelming. You can choose to turn off the chat, so you click no one. If you only want people to be able to chat with you, you can do that. 
Um, if you only want people to be able to publicly chat and you don't want them to private message each other, you can have that one. By default, you have the option for everything, but I wanted to make sure you knew that that option was there for you. And that's how you close that. It is worth, in terms of a tip for you as the host, it is worth practicing having that chat open because it is a way if somebody joins the call and maybe they can listen and they can watch but they can't talk because they're in a noisy environment they've got a way that they can communicate with you and also ask questions privately and you can do things like if you're presenting something and you can say right if anybody has any questions please can we pop them in the chat um, and if you've got a written record then as well I do believe there is a way I think I don't remember if the setting is here I've never used it, but I have seen somewhere where you can actually save the chat. Um, oh, the record button, which, as you know earlier on, I forgot to press, uh, is is here. You can choose to record on your computer, which is what I tend to do. If you've got a pro account, you can also record in the cloud as well. And I think that, in essence, I'm just checking anything else. Um, let's have a look. So these are just some of the, the sharing options. Um, I think, in essence, that's it. Most of the controls are the same as what you get when you are in a meeting. But you've just got those few little extra ones I wanted to show you because you are the host. Okay, so now you know how to sign up for an account, you know how to schedule a meeting, you know how to start a meeting. Hopefully that's been helpful. As ever, if any questions at all, do please let me know. Thank you for watching. I shall catch up with you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.